Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Art 192 on Photoshop Computer Graphics for the Fall 2021 semester. Today we're going to work on lesson three, what covers, which covers kind of the art of making selections. <clears throat> selections are used to isolate parts of an image. And when you do that, you are able to do a variety of things with those parts. <clears throat> You can adjust the color balance. You can adjust levels, meaning the range of lightness and darkness. Um, and you can isolate them and combine them with other images. And that's what you'll be doing after we start to work on um, the layers um, lesson. You'll begin working on either the postcard assignment or if you choose, do the um, uh, the selfie photo bomb assignment, where you're going to have to take multiple images, combine them together uh, seamlessly so it looks like one original image. So uh, in the lesson, in the exercise here, they have, um, here's our finished version over here. So let me um, just isolate it really quickly. So I'll click here and I'm going to window. And I want to arrange, and I just want to make sure that it's all in tabs at the moment, consolidate into tabs. So this is our start file. And you can see that we have six images at the bottom and one singular image at the top. And we're supposed to take each of these individual elements at the bottom and combine them in some fashion with the top one. I'm going to do it pretty darn close to the way the textbook does it, but there is a little bit of difference, a little bit of departure. So what it's supposed to look like when we're all done, I come up here and I select the end file and zoom in a little bit. This is what it's supposed to look like when it's all done. We've taken the sand dollar and we've taken the, the ceramic dish with um, the coral and the conch shell and the mussel and that sort of thing and isolated those individual parts and combined them into one image. And you can see at the bottom, they have collapsed all of those layers and um, into one final image. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna go back over here. And I think rather than do two up, I would rather just do the one. So we can, um, it's pretty straightforward. I can switch back and forth, but we're gonna start with um, the first, the sand dollar, and we're going to start with the easiest way of selecting. So if you have an image and it's on a solid or even a, a background that has some texture or variation, one of your go-to tools is going to be, and it will be found underneath right now. Let me go ahead and um, reset my workspace just to make sure that everyone else's is the same. Whoops, I didn't want that. Um, long one, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and reset essentials so that we have the same thing here. So if we look over here, um, just beneath um, the move tool, um, there are three little tools here and there's some of them have additional variations underneath that we're gonna use extensively in this exercise. The first one that shows up is an elliptical marquee tool. And hidden under that is also a rectangular marquee. We will be using both of those. It's rare that a single row, horizontal or vertical, are used anymore. They used to be used extensively in web design. Underneath that, we have the polygonal lasso tool. We have the lasso tool. And we have the magnetic lasso tool. We will be using all three of these in this lesson. And then in the third one down here, we have the magic wand, which is good for some things. And the most important ones are your quick selection tool and your object selection tool. Okay, so we're going to be using the, this is more often than not, you're going to start with these, one of these two, and then perhaps um, use some of the, one of the other tools or a combination of the tools to finalize your selection. So to do that, I'm gonna switch here and I'm going to use a quick selection tool. And I'm just gonna click and drag a little bit inside the, the sand dollar. And you can see 
um, that it was able to detect the edge quite nicely. So when that tool works, it really makes short order of um, your, you know, your work flow. So what we want to do, and this is where I depart from the book, is that we have to switch to the move tool. And if you do so, if you click and you drag, notice that it leaves whatever background color we have here, right? For that particular layer. I don't want to do that. Um, I, again, I like working non-destructively. So what I would prefer to do every time we make a selection is to make a copy of it and put it on its own layer. So we keep our original layer intact. So to do that, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit Command J or Control J on the PC. And you can see that it automatically added a new layer. I'm going to double click on the name and name it Sand Dollar. OK, so I know which image it is. And if I turn off the background, you can see that, that that's still there. The other thing that I forgot to do that, again, I think is good practice is I'm going to copy the background layer in case I really, really screw up. I can always go back and revisit it and make whatever changes that I need to do. So I'm going to click and drag on it, or I can just select the layer and hit Command J. And then I can turn off the background, and it's made a copy of it. So now I can take the Move tool, and I can take and I can move it into position. And I'm good to go. If you want to see how well it's it made the selection, you can zoom in, and you can see that it's a very nice crisp edge, a little bit of um, softness to it, so that you know it, it it's not doesn't look too artificial. And we're set to go on to the next one. The next one B over here is the coral, and as I mentioned, you can use any of these tools in combination with one another. So one of the tools that I could use would be the, the um, lasso tool. And I could click and I can drag it here. And I could try to make a copy of it and drag it around like so. And it's going to be really hard to do so. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a combination of two tools. I'm going to start with the rectangular marquee tool. and the reason that this will work is because I have a stark white background. If I have a, if you have a solid color in the background, it will make it much easier to use this combination of tools. So now what I want to do is I want to click and I want to drag diagonally around the, um, the coral. And I have to make sure that I have the correct layers selected. I didn't. I left it on the sand dollar layer. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. It has to be on the correct layer. So now what I can do is I can zoom in here so you can see this a little bit better. And what I want to do is I'm going to select the magic wand now. Now, if I want to add to the selection, you hold down the Shift key. If I want to subtract from the selection, you hold down the Alt or Option key. Well, I want to subtract the white background from this selection. Because right now it has the coral and the white background all selected as one. So if I hold down my option key on my Mac and I click, notice that now it isolates itself or, or you know, makes a little marching ants snug around the, the coral itself. So I'm in good shape. Now what I can do, as I did before, is I can make a copy of it um, and put it on a new layer and keep the original intact. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J. And I'll rename it Coral. OK. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And let's move it into place. And I'm going to use the um, Move tool to do that, make sure I have the correct layer selected. And I can click and drag and move it into position. So there we go. So that's another way, another, you know, using combination of tools to, to select. Um, the next 
um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select this. Now, this is a little different. Um, I could just as easily um, come back in here and you might want not want to use this technique, but when you have to, you should develop the skills to do so. So let me show you when you're working on your own, the way that you'd probably want to do it. I'd probably want to use the object selection tool. And if I click and I drag around it like so with this box, it's going to detect that I only want, uh, see, I don't, I can't do use that because I have the wrong layers selected. It's easy to forget. I can't walk and walk and chew gum at the same time. So now we can do that. And you can see that it made a perfect selection of it. So when you're working on your own, that would be the desired way to work. But in this exercise, they want us to do it a little differently. They want us to use instead the elliptical marquee tool. So typically when you're using the rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool, um, there's a couple of ways that you can make your selection. You can click and you can drag diagonally, and that's one way of doing it but I'm having a hard time selecting just the dish, nothing else. I could go back as I did with the last um, coral and I could, you know, once I have most of it selected, I could come back with the magic wand and deselect it. But this one is a little different. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your stomach at the same time. So I'm gonna deselect and do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna start with the elliptical tool. I'm going to move my cursor and try to find it. Try to find the center of this as best I can. And now I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key. And when I click and I drag, notice that it, rather than diagonal, the diagonal selection, it makes it from the center outward. So now I can try to get it close. And you can see that I'm just a little bit off. So I, now I'm moving my mouse forward backwards, left, right, that I'm not quite centered. So now what I need to do is I need to hold down, continue to hold down the Option or Alt key, hold down the space bar, and now I can move it over just a little bit. And I'm gonna to try to get this centered up as best I can. I'm gonna let go of the space bar, continue holding down the Option or Alt key, and then continue to drag and manipulate this until I get a selection just inside. And I don't want to select any pixels on the outside. Not at all. Um, it will look like you cut it out with a pair of scissors if you do that. So this is close enough for government work. I've got a pretty good selection here. Now I'll go ahead and I'm going to release the mouse first and then let go of the Alt key. If I don't, then it will go back to diagonal. Now, if I wanted to fine tune this in any way, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner, there was a little bit of the plate that's, that wasn't selected. I can go back up to select, the select menu. And what I can do is I can transform selection. It brings up little handles. Now I can click and I can drag over just a little bit and I can pull this down just a little bit and I can rotate it just a little bit to refine my selection. That's one way of doing that. And when I'm done, I click the checkbox. I have my selection, I have my marching ants and we can save selections too, which is what something we will do later on in our lesson. Let me um, refine this a little bit more. I'm gonna go back again and go to select I'm going to transform selection. And I want to bring this up a little bit because I don't want this on the edge, the marching ants on the edge. I want it just inside. Because if you make your selection right on the edge of the object, you will also pick up some of the background pixels as well. And you don't want to do that. Um, it's a telltale sign that you have manipulated or combined images. So again, to make it seamless, you know. Just if it's a couple pixels inside, we're good to go. So I'll go ahead and I'll check it to make sure that we have our selection. Hit Command or um, Control J. It adds a brand new layer. We all name this one Dish. Okay, so I know which one it is. 
And now I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to come back up here with the move tool or hit V and that will get you to the move tool. And I can put it in position here. And it's a nice clean selection again. That's what I want. So that C, if I go to D, D is a little bit different, okay? So D, what I want to do, and this is a technique that I really don't like using. I don't like using it at all. But they want us to start off using the lasso tool. And my hand-eye coordination these days is really poor. But what that would do is you would have to click and drag around this very slowly, either clockwise or counterclockwise until you go all the way around and then you can refine it. I instead like using, if I'm gonna use something like this, I'm gonna or do something like this, I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool and then come back and refine it with the lasso tool and add and subtract pixels. So I'm gonna, instead of the lasso tool, I'm gonna use the polygonal lasso tool. I'm gonna to zoom in a little bit so I can really see this. And where you start is unimportant. Also, another thing is I don't like looking at the little cursor that they have, the little icon. So if I hit caps lock, notice it changes to crosshairs. Now I have a, a, a better idea of where I'm selecting. So now I'm just gonna go incrementally and I'm every time I move the mouse just a little bit, I'm clicking the mouse and then moving it and then clicking the mouse and then moving it, okay? So just in small little baby steps here. I try to get the best selection that I possibly can. And if I need to come back and make some changes, it's not really that hard. And again, in most cases now, you're not gonna use these tools that often. You're gonna use the object selection tool or you're gonna use the quick selection tool. And that will get you started. And then maybe you will use one of these other tools that I'm showing you now to go back in and to refine your selections just a little bit. So it takes a little, you know, a couple of minutes here. It's um, kind of like walk it, watching grass, grass grow right now. They come around here and to make my selection. I'm just going and I'm clicking and dragging and clicking and dragging. And if I find a straight path, I just try to go across as best I can and make my selection. So before you know it, we will have a pretty good selection done. So something, um, while you don't have to start doing the, the postcard yet or the photo selfie photo bomb assignment, you might wanna think about which one you wanna do. You might wanna think about um, what subject you're going to do for the postcard or the selfie photo bomb. You might want to start looking at images of celebrities or politicians or look at some um, paint, famous paintings that you could use to combine yourself with. Those, those would be kind of nice because when we get started with it, I will show you some examples of um, not student work, but work that I found on the internet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and quickly try to wrap this up and also try to make a couple of mistakes so that you can see how I go back and correct and refine my selection. And when you get all the way back to the starting point with these selections, to get the marching ants, um, you will see, notice it will be hard for you to see on my screen, but it switches from the crosshairs back to the original cursor. And there's a little circle in the lower right-hand corner, which indicates that I have a closed path. Now, you'll notice over here, some of these I missed. Now, if I wanna go back in and I wanna add them, now what I might do is select the lasso tool. And what I can do is I can hold down the shift key which now enables me to add. And I can click and drag starting from the inside and working out and then go around in here. And you can see how I added those pixels. 
Now, if I need, if I go really, if I really go in here and I make a mistake like so, and I added too many pixels, now I can hold down the Option or Alt key, and I can click and drag in here like so, starting on the inside, go back to the outside, and go around like so, and remove those pixels. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a few pixels. Just a couple. Um, I probably don't need to do this, but I will anyway. So this would be a, a case where you couldn't really um, use that last technique that I showed you to be able to add and subtract. So now I've got my selection. Again, a different set of tools to get my results. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit Command J to um, or Control J to put it on a new um, layer, and I'll rename it Muscle. Oops, I don't want it capitalized. M U S S E L. And we'll zoom out again. So you're constant zooming, you know, constantly zooming in and out. So now what I want to do is select the Move tool. Move it into position, but you can see it's not facing in the right direction. So how do I change it? Um, one of your go-to tools will be the transform tool. The easiest way to do that is to hit, remember T for transform and to hit command or control T. So if I go under image or edit rather, and I go to transform, you could actually before, I don't wanna to go to transform, I can, but you can see that I can scale, I can rotate, I can skew, I can distort, I can warp from here. But what I want to do is use free transform. A little box is formed around the outside, a selection box. Now I can move my cursor around one of the corners and it turns into a little curved um, double headed arrow. And when it, that happens, I can click and I can drag and I can move it in position. If you wanted to move, in 45 degree increments, hold down the shift key and it will lock it into position. But we don't need to do that. We just need to ballpark it and get it in the right position, move in the center, move it here, go back out. If I want to rotate it a little bit more, I can do that, get it into position. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit click on the, um, the commit transform. You can always go back and transform it again. You can modify the selections as much as you want. So now we have two more to go. We have the Nautilus shell. So I'm going to zoom in here. And this, this tool is pretty nice too. Um, it's hidden underneath the um, lasso tool, and it's called the magnetic lasso tool. So this is a tool that you would use. Again, you'll notice that there's a subtle difference or, or there's a pattern behind it. So um, most other tools won't work. But that, I mean, that was the case for a very long time. But if I were to go back again, and I were to select, again, the, um, the object selection tool, make sure that I have the correct layer selected and click and drag around it. Let's see what kind of results I get. It's perfect. So, you know, that will, that will be your, as I said, your go-to um, tool. And if it doesn't work, then you can use the other tools in addition to it to refine your selection. To deselect, I hit Command or Control D for deselect. Well, let's try the magnetic lasso tool and see how that works. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to start at the top, and it's going to, if I move very slowly, or if I move a little bit, and every time I move just a tad, you'll feel it kind of click into position if you work in slow incremental steps. And every time I do that, I, you know, I get to a little, you know, additional point on my, um, my shell here. I click, so you don't have to click, but um, I find it works a little bit. You know, move it, move the mouse a little bit, and click. It works pretty well. 
Um, if you have really good hand-eye coordination, you don't have to click, you just drag all the way around. But you can see that I moved it a little bit too much. And there's a um, part of the shell that was not selected. So I need to go back and uh, it happened again and use one of the other tools to um, refine my selection. So let's go again. Oh, just, you know, I, for whatever reason, you know, go around this clockwise. And about halfway done with this. Now I'll refine my selection. We'll be on the home stretch. So this lesson obviously will not take us that long to complete today. But it's an important one because um, layers and selections are used frequently um, in creating unique illustrations. Um, they're used in photo retouching or used in any number of ways where you're taking elements from one photograph and combining them with another. And again, as I said, like with the other selection tool, when you come back to the start, you'll see the little circle in the lower right-hand corner, and now it makes a selection. So now I want to go ahead and I want to add to that selection where it messed up down here. So I'll go back and I'll use the lasso tool. And I'll hold down the shift key because I want to add to my selection just a little bit. And I'll click here and drag across and come back in and around. And you can see that how it's added to the selection. I'll do the same down here. And my selection is complete. Zoom back out. So I can hit command minus, or I can, on my laptop here, I can pinch with my fingers to zoom out. And now I'm ready to put it on its own layer. So make sure that I have the right, the correct layer selected, hit command or control J, name this Nautilus. I don't want it caps. It's my Nautilus shell. Zoom out a little bit more. And let's put it in a position. Again, use the move tool or hit V and move it into place. Now, there's more, one more thing that we need to do. And we need to take, and they want us to put this little screw in each of the corners up here. So we're going to have to copy it and we're going to have to. Um, make copies of it. And I prefer putting each one of them on a separate layer. So I'm gonna to go to the very top here when I do this. And I'm gonna zoom in. And it will be a technique that I used before. I'm gonna use the elliptical marquee tool. And I'm gonna to try to find the center of this. And I'm gonna hold down both the option and the shift key. By holding down the option key, it creates an ellipse. And you probably don't see the marching ants that well, but as soon as I hold down the shift key, it, make, it con constrains it to a perfect circle. And if you do that with the rectangular marquee tool, what it will do is it will constrain it to be a perfect square. So now I can find my center by pulling it out a little bit let go of the space bar, pull it out a little bit more. And I find my edge, let go of the mouse, and then I let go of the option and the shift key. Now I can go ahead and hit Command J. Whoops, see I had the wrong selection, wrong layer selected. So let's go back to this select, this layer, hit Command J. And I'm gonna move it to the top. Do I have to? No, I'm just going to do that. And I'll call it um, screw. OK. I can zoom out, command minus. And now I need to move this into position. And I will go ahead and I'll make a copy of each of these. I'm going to go ahead and move it into place. 
I'm going to zoom back in on this area. I obviously need to resize it a little bit to be, be able to use it with the others. So I hit Command or Control T to resize it. To resize it from the center and to also constrain the proportions, because if I don't do that, if I click and drag, notice how I can squeeze it and stretch it. I don't want to do that. So I want to hold down the Shift key and the Option key, move over one of the corners and shrink it down a tad, like so. Move it into position. If I want to rotate it, I can just a little bit. And now what I want to do is I want to complete the transformation and I want to make copies of this. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and um, hit Command J or Control J. Make a copy of it. So there's this first this copy and I'm going to move it. As I move it across, notice that it slips slides around. But if I hold down the shift key, it constrains the movement of it so that it's perfectly horizontal. Okay, I get it into position. I hit Command or Control J again to make a copy of it. Use the Move tool again. And again, as I move it, I'm holding down the Shift key. And you'll notice the little pink lines for the smart guides allow me to move it into position and make it a perfect horizontal move. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this one one more time. Command or Control J. Okay, use the Move tool, move it across. Whoops. There we go. Let me undo that. I may have goofed. Let's turn this one off and see what happens. Yeah, I undid it two, one too many times. So Command or Control J. Begin to move it. Hold down the Shift key. And move it into position here. And we're just about done with this. So we're going to probably finish a little bit early today. So one of the things that you're going to want to do is the crop it so that you get this stuff out of here down below. And if you recall from the previous lesson, I said it's best if you uncheck um, delete crop pixels. So now what I can do is I can move this up. So and get some of these pixels out of here. If I want to erase this other part down here, I can do that. Or if I want a really tight crop, I can do that. I'm having trouble now controlling my mouse. There we go. Make this a little bit smaller at the top. And I click the checkbox. So now I've removed most of it. Whoops. There we go. Now, to get rid of this little part down here, since it really isn't that important, if I go ahead and I use the Move tool, I go ahead and I move my piece up a little bit. Let's zoom out a little. Let's actually let me zoom in. I want to, there we go, move up. If I have white in the foreground, one of the ways of doing that is I can use my rectangular um, oh, come on. Uh, no, it's not. Let me go ahead and make sure that I go back. If I want to make sure that I have white in the foreground, let's click this one right here in the upper left-hand corner to this. And it defaults to the black foreground, white background. And now I click the little button to the right of it, and it flips them. Now I can take the rectangular marquee tool up here. And I'm going to click and drag across this. Whoops. 
that I had the rectangular one. E select. There we go. Click and drag across like so. And now I want to fill it with those white pixels. So if I hold down the option or alt key and I hit delete, it fills it with the white pixels. So it fills it with a white foreground color. So the last thing that I want to do, the textbook wants us to do, that I don't recommend doing with your own work, and especially when you turn in your assignments to me, I like seeing all of your work in progress. So I like seeing all of the layers. But what you might do for a client is what you will do is I'm going to make a copy of this. So I'm going to go to um, image and I'm going to select duplicate. I would first save this one, save this as my, my working file. And then what I want to do is I want to go under image. My computer starts to get sluggish again. Yeah. Image. Duplicate. So it duplicates the whole file. Okay, so I'll just, I can rename it. I'm going to name it, just leave it the default. Um, zero, three, start, copy. And now what I can do is I can flatten the whole thing. So this is what you would probably give your client, um, the flattened version. To get the flattened version, I can go up here in the upper right-hand corner of the layers panel. And at the very bottom down here, I can just say that I want to flatten the image. And that collapses everything. And I'm going to discard hidden layers, and I'm good to go. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, using most of our basic <clears throat> selection tools. Many of the tools, um, the tools you probably won't use that often. The ones that you will want to start with, as I said, will be your object selection tool. Um, another good one too is the quick selection tool. You'll probably start with those and then you can use any number of these other tools to get you to the same, uh, you know, to refine your selection. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, I've done it in probably just a little over a half an hour. It's not a hard one to do. Um, probably the hardest one that you'll, <coughs> you'll, uh, you'll have the two will be selecting the dish with a coral on it and the muscle. Those will be the two hardest ones to do. But again, as I said, if you're doing this for yourself, if you're doing it for the first assignment, you wouldn't need to use those. You could use the object selection tool or the quick selection tool, and it would get you to a nice um, finished selection. So that's it for today. Um, are there any questions? I will have this posted on our YouTube, my YouTube channel within about an hour. Um, no questions from anybody? No? Good. Okay, if there aren't any questions, then I'm going to say goodbye and we'll start with lesson four on Monday. Um, what also you should be thinking about is the first assignment, the postcard or the selfie photo bomb because Starting next week, I will assign it and it will be, you'll start working on it and you'll have maybe three to four weeks um, to work on that assignment in addition to the lessons that we're working on. Okay. So if that's it, um, I'm going to say goodbye and you're free to leave and I will um, pause the recording now. And that will be it for today. Okay.